Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Angela Cole, and I'm a botanical and watercolor artist and tutor. I teach monthly on Patreon and have a few classes on Skillshare. And last month we were painting this beautiful peony, purple peony. And in this video, part one, I'm gonna show you how I painted foundation layers for this beautiful flower head. I'm gonna be using wet on wet technique and I thought I will use this opportunity to talk a little bit more about wet on wet technique, what it is and how to use it and when and why usually to choose this technique. So if you're interested, let's dive in. And you can see me now mixing the colors for this peony flower. I tried to use limited palette and with the least amount of pigments, I create different uh, shades of mixes. For this peony bud, I'm using quinacridone magenta, red brilliant violet, alizarin crimson, and a little bit of phthalo blue. I normally want to use as least amount of pigments as possible in order to avoid paintings getting muddy and I want them to stay fresh and vibrant. So color mixing is a skill you definitely want to practice. And at first I know it can be quite scary, but the more often you allow yourself to play with the pigments and mixing, the more comfortable you will get. So watercolor wet on wet technique is one of the most popular techniques amongst watercolor painters and especially popular for botanical paintings and that involves applying wet watercolor paint onto a wet paper surface. The technique is characterized by its soft blended edges and fluid organic qualities making it well suited for painting delicate lifelike botanical subjects like flowers and leaves. So why would you use watercolor wet over technique for botanical painting? This technique is ideal for capturing the delicate and organic qualities of flowers and other botanical elements. Wet on wet allows the watercolor paint to blend naturally on a paper creating very soft and more atmospheric effect. This technique is also great for painting larger areas of color with fever brush strokes, making it faster to cover larger areas of painting surface. Therefore, I always start almost every painting with wet on wet technique as my base and foundation layers, because that way I can cover most of the area and creating very soft transitions between light and shadow. I can apply multiple colors on one water glaze, letting them blend in nicely with each other. I personally like to use it for my foundation base layers. Other painters use it throughout the entire painting and that's just like th their way of painting. This technique is best to use when you want to achieve very soft organic and fluid effects in your botanical paintings. You can use it to paint various elements of your botanical subjects such as flowers, leaves, stems, pretty much anything to create more naturalistic look. It is also useful when painting backgrounds, if backgrounds are your thing, or if you are a landscape painter, what and what might be the main technique you would use. So how exactly do you use wet on wet technique and how do you practice it in, in real life? So first of all, choose the right paper. For this technique, it's best to use high quality watercolor paper that would be 100% cotton so that it can handle wetness and wet on wet process without buckling or tearing. To prevent paper from buckling, I also stretch my watercolor paper onto a board. That's why you can see those brown tape. 
uh, sides around my paper always because the paper is stretched onto board that way paper stays flat so now that you have your paper sorted you have your drawing on you perhaps stretched your watercolor paper if you don't want to stretch it I suggest using heavyweight paper so now using clean brush load your brush with clean water that's why I usually use two containers for water one for cleaning the brush and the other one for water glazes and apply that clean water on the paper making sure you cover the entire area that you want to paint so now how much water you have on your paper can create very different effects for you same way different amount of water on your brush can also create different effects so a good indication to know whether your paper is wet enough or not too much is when you apply your water on entire surface tilt your head to see the light reflecting of that water glaze and you should see a very soft glistening rather than glossy shine and you still should be able to see some watercolor paper texture through that glaze that way it's a right amount of water and you are ready to paint so now mix your color with plenty of water pick up your favorite brush and load your brush with the pigment and so using the tip of your brush apply your watercolor paint onto the wet paper surface in loose organic manner use a combination of colors to create depth and interest in your painting as you paint allow the colors to blend together naturally on wet paper surface you also can use drier paint to keep adding to your wet still drying glaze to create more depth and more dimension and more detail you can adjust your colors by lifting the color with clean down brush in order to create highlights and if you lift your colors with clean down brush at the beginning you will get bigger softer highlights and if you do that before the glaze dries you can create very thin wane like marks just with one glaze using water i can create a multi-dimensional petal in this case as i paint this peony flower you can see i create form and detail even and veining and shadow and different colors and so practicing this technique gives you lots of freedom to create anything you want really with this wet on wet technique it isn't one of the easiest techniques i might say because as the glaze is wet there's water on your paper and your black color it spreads everywhere and sometimes that be that might be quite stressful if you're a little bit uncertain and it's hard to keep your colors in places that you want that's why it's very important to practice this technique because different wetness on your paper will give you different results so you need to test and see how wet your paper how wet you want it to be do you want your color to uh, be paler and softer or do you want to create slightly strong colors you need to adjust the colors accordingly And so once that initial layer is dry, you can continue painting with wet on wet technique. You can re-wet the area that you already painted and apply more colors. Or you can continue glazing with wet paint on dry paper. From that point on, it's up to you. So wet on wet technique for me is mainly used for foundation layers. I do sometimes use it throughout the painting more if I want some softer transitions between colors, if the flower has more colors, but generally speaking, for me, that's a um, foundation layer a tool. So I hope you liked a few tips here and there and you enjoyed watching me paint those foundation layers with wet on wet technique on this beautiful purple peony and in the next video we will continue building this flower and putting more layers 
and we will be using wet on dry glazing and dry brush techniques to really create this very solid strong color saturated color and of course the texture that peony has So full step-by-step -step class is on my Patreon if you are interested on following along with us and painting this flower. If not, then I'm going to see you in the next year of videos. So thumbs up and likes if you enjoy watching my videos and I will see you soon in the next one. Bye!